thank you all for coming out tonight on this lovely February night. Uh, not typical of, of February nights we have. Usually February is the worst month. Um, my name is Wes McLeod. I'm with Cape Fear Council of Governments. Uh, I'm going to be sharing a short presentation with you tonight about the land use plan, talking a little bit about what the land use plan is, uh, some of the demographic statistics related to the town of Holden Beach, um, the community survey results that I, I believe probably a good number of you folks have, have taken that survey. Uh, they're here tonight. Um, and then we'll close the meeting with having a brainstorming exercise about some of the things that are uh, particularly important to you folks about Holden Beach. Um, we do have some committee members here that are assisting with developing the land use plan. Uh, if our committee members could raise their hands. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. Very good. Um, so kudos to these folks. They are painstakingly reviewing all of the draft material uh, and ensuring uh, the land use plan uh, meets the needs of the citizens at large uh, before it's ultimately adopted. It will go to the planning board for recommendation and then it will ultimately go to the commissioners before it's adopted and there will also be another uh, opportunity for public input, public hearing before that plan is adopted. With that, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, we'll hope to get you guys out of here um, around 8, um, but depending on how dialogue goes, the, the meeting may go a little bit later. If I can figure out how to... Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to talk briefly about what a land use plan is, some demographic statistics, the survey, and close with an exercise. So, uh, folks may be wondering, what is a land use plan? How does it, it affect me? Why am I here tonight? Um, it is the official document that contains the goals, policies, analysis, and maps that, that more or less outlines a community strategy for growth moving forward. There is formal guidance in this uh, document for elected officials and your planning board. So if there's a zoning decision, text amendment or rezoning, they can look at this land use and plan and see what it has to say about, say, a particular piece of property if it's being proposed from a rezoning. Well, is that consistent with our land use plan? Uh, and it also offers an open forum for the public to comment about things that they feel are important regarding growth and development. That's, for example, why we're here um, tonight. A land use plan is not a zoning ordinance, though, so it is not regulatory. There are some components of it uh, having to do with camera areas of environmental concern that require consistency review for major permits, but that's very limited. By and large, this is a big picture document about the things that we believe in and the things that we want to see happen in Holden Beach in the future. So I'm going to share some um, demographic statistics with you. And I apologize, you guys are maybe having difficulty seeing some of this, uh, but all this material is also be, will be contained in this document uh, that you'll be able to pour over. This table here shows permanent population growth from 1980 to 2016. Now these are the permanent residents. Um, so over that, over from 1980 to 2016, you had uh, substantial amount from a percentage standpoint of growth. You added a, almost 400 permanent residents from 1980 to 2016. However, you lost some residents from, from 2000 to 2016, but in the last you know, 10 years or so, your permanent resident population has more or less stayed the same. Now, I have a caveat here. Census data collection for beach towns is incredibly difficult. Um, Folks are second homeowners, sometimes they're here when the census folks come around, so the accuracy sometimes is called into question, but it's the best data we have available um, to, to understand uh, demographic figures. Conversely, Brunswick County has seen, uh, as, as you all know, tremendous population growth over the last 25, 35 years. Uh, has grown by 230 it's hard to imagine that in 1980 there was only 35,000 people living in Brunswick County. Um, 
right now, uh, as of the 2016 figures, it was a little under 120,000 and continuing to grow uh, every year uh, by leaps and bounds. Uh, just an added um, uh, a note here, uh, projections for Brunswick, New Hanover, and Pender County over the next 30 years uh, projected to add about 20 folks a day um, across those three counties for the next 30 years. Most of that coming in uh, New Hanover and Brunswick County. For comparison across uh, all the North Carolina beach towns, you guys are sort of in the middle in terms of the permanent resident population growth. You guys have, have more or less um, stayed the same since 1990. You've had some beach towns that had tremendous population growth, like Sunset Beach, but part of that was due to annexation. Uh, they essentially brought folks into their corporate limits by moving their boundary line, not necessarily by adding folks naturally uh, to their population boundaries. Uh, you're, your close by beaches, Oak Island and Ocean Isle Beach. Oak Island saw 12.9% population growth since 1990, and Ocean Isle Beach about 20%. Uh, Ocean Isle Beach, for example, has 639 permanent residents. You guys have 633, so pretty close. And I'd also like to mention that you are also similar to Ocean Isle Beach in that your corporate limits only includes the island portion of the town. Ocean Isle Beach only has residents on the island portion of the town. Uh, they do have the ETJ that includes residents, but there are only residents on the island portion of the town of, of both places. Thank you for the, the clarification. In terms of population by age, um, this big red line here is showing that the age cohorts, you guys uh, have a substantial percentage of your permanent resident population are considered to be baby boomer baby boomers that's folks age 55 to 74 almost 60 percent of your permanent resident population that is similar to Brunswick County beach towns and the other beach towns across uh, the state that compares with Brunswick County overall which I might add has a little bit older population than the state they have 32 percent of their population is in that baby boomer age cohort you all have very few residents that are under the age of 34. And then in terms of your median age, <coughs> Town of Holden Beach median age of their permanent residents is 61 years of age. In Brunswick County, that's, it's still pretty high at 50 years. But in North Carolina, across the state overall, it's 38 years of age. So you guys aren't the oldest in Brunswick County Beach towns. Sunset Beach is 66 years of age, so you're a spry bunch uh, compared, compared with uh, your neighbors down the road. Seasonal population um, is very different than your permanent population. Uh, in the summer months, we anticipate there's somewhere around 17,000 folks over here staying overnight. You compound that with anywhere from 500 to 2,000 day trippers. So you're getting up close to uh, 20,000 folks visiting the island or being on the island uh, in those summer months. And that's really the true impact that you have. It's not fair to say that there's only 633 people living here, um, I might add. In terms of population projections, this is your permanent population projections. Um, if you are to grow alongside the growth rate of Brunswick County and proportionally, uh, we would anticipate that your permanent resident population will be almost 1,100 uh, by the year 2036. Now, this is the rate. This is the methodology that the, the Division of Coast, Coastal Management likes us to use for projecting population. It is a little bit more difficult to project population in beach communities. However, we have seen across the nation and across our uh, uh, state and our beach communities, there, there's starting to be more conversion of second home, home second homes into permanent, uh, permanent resident homes. And 
there's also been somewhat of a slow trickle of younger families moving into some of these beach towns uh, because they're able to work remotely or they're interested in quality of life things and they're choosing to come live at the beach. Now that doesn't mean that you guys are going to double your permanent resident population in the next five years, but I think the trend will start to show itself in the next five, ten years, um, and, and you in fact may hit these numbers which would have you close to doubling your permanent resident population over the next 30 years. Uh, Brunswick, Brunswick County is anticipated to essentially double their population, uh, not, not quite, but they're anticipated to have almost 220,000 people uh, by the year 2046. It would be an astounding amount of folks uh, coming into this area. In terms of median value of, of owner-occupied housing, you guys have your home, home values on average, or in terms of median value, is just over 400000 For comparison, across all the North Carolina beach communities, that number is 364000 So you are slightly above the median home value of the North Carolina beach communities. You do have two outliers on this chart, Wrightsville Beach and Bald Head Island are substantially higher than, uh, than a lot of the other beach communities in North Carolina. So you're pretty much in line with other home values uh, across the state for beach communities. In terms of building activity, um, Seeing a steady trend in the number of building permits issued for single-family residential units. Uh, and this shows through 2017. We did pull those figures for 2018. Um, and there will be a slight drop-off for 2018. There was 38 uh, permits issued for, for single-family new construction last year. But you're trending upward. Um, you had a substantial number of permits issued in 2016 and 2017. Seems to be a slight dip, but linear projections have you continuing to show increases in the number of new single-family permits issued for the town. Okay. I'm going to jump in here to the community survey update. I'm going to try to get through this quickly. Um, we had a great number of responses to the community survey. so. Thank you all uh, who took the survey. We had nearly 900 responses. I believe that was almost double uh, the previous survey effort. I think we had around 400 the last time they did the land use plan. Um, nonetheless, that's a great number of responses. The uh, vast majority of those were from property owners, 810. In fact, were from property owners, 182 year-round residents, 626 second home, and then two business owners. The remainder of those responses were from renters, some seasonal visitors, and approximately 25 off-island residents. So I'm going to quickly touch on, I'm not going to go through all of the survey results, uh, but I'm going to touch on a couple of the response, responses to the questions. So what kind, one of the questions asked, what kinds of new private development would you most like to see in Holden Beach? No surprise, number one being low density single family development. Um, number two, small businesses that serve the needs of residents. And then number three being entertainment, uh, restaurants, recreation, things of that nature. Things for you folks to go out and do. This is in line with uh, the other Brunswick County beach towns. Uh, we've, we've done similar surveys with them, so you guys are right in line uh, with them. No, no surprise here that we're really interested in having low-density single-family residents um, as, as continuing to be the new type of private development in town. In terms of what do you consider to be the most important role for the town to play in influencing the character of development of Holden Beach? One being pr protecting the beach and encourage continued coastal storm damage reduction, in other words, beach renourishment, making sure that beach stays there for us to use. Uh, number two, managing the density and intensity of de development. That's in line with ensuring that we continue to have low density single family development. And number three, retaining and enhancing, um, uh, sorry, 
retain and enhance community appearance through landscaping, signage, et cetera. Uh, there's a, a number of responses related to the causeway. Causeway is not in the town's jurisdiction, but nonetheless, there's still uh, uh, survey responses relating to that causeway. What do you think the most important growth and development issues facing uh, Olden Beach are? Number one, coastal storm damage reduction and beach renourishment, beach protection. Again, very important. Two, density of development, and three, environmental protection. Starting to see a little bit of a trend here. It's very important that we maintain the beach and hold the beach. What do you consider to be the most important transportation issues for Holden Beach? Number one being roadway drainage. This is... So <laughs> this is... Um, there are other beach communities that this is the number one too, so you guys are not alone. Um, Number two being maintenance of existing roadways, and number three being parking availability um, and public access. And that, that one's a little bit further down and pretty close to the fourth, which was at 29%, which is lack of um, facilities for bicyclists and pedestrians. So those are sort of one and the same, uh, but if we're taking the top three, it doesn't make it into the top three. And the last one that I'll touch on, um, there's a question about what's your favorite thing about Holden Beach. Um, and these were sort of the overwhelming responses. Lack of commercial development, uncrowded, clean beaches, family friendly, quiet, um, all season solitude. You guys are all experiencing that currently. Um, especially nice when you have an almost 80 degree day. Uh, and then mostly single family houses. I think that probably doesn't come as a surprise to most of you. And I would anticipate that those responses are, are pretty much in line with, with what you all would also anticipate the responses to be. So that's it for the survey portion. Uh, the plan, the draft plan, will have an analysis of each of those questions and a little bit more detail. Um, so once the draft is available, I'll encourage you to uh, look through it. Okay. So. That's about all I have tonight uh, in terms of me sitting up here being a talking head. Uh, the rest of the meeting, uh, I would like to encourage you guys to participate in answering some questions about uh, Holden Beach as it relates to your opinions and your feelings about Holden Beach. Um, we're going to, I'm going to write up some, bring my uh, uh, easel over here figure out what, what you guys believe to be the most important assets, what are some of the key issues facing the town, and then what are some of the things that you feel are desirable um, to see happen uh, in the future. So uh, with no uh, further delay, we'll go ahead and get started. And what we're going to do is there are no wrong answers here, um, and, and we're going to try to keep things civil as well. Um, and I'm going to uh, write up responses of folks as, as they uh, are called out, and we're going to post these um, responses along the wall. We'll close the meeting, everyone will be given a couple of dots, and you'll be able to put dots on those uh, items, comments that were mentioned that you feel are most important. So, let's start off with Someone wants to volunteer, and we can even call on our chair to start start this off. I'm listening, um, I'm not participating. You're not participating, okay. Other people need to participate. Okay. So who would want to volunteer and, and say, what what do you believe are some of the town's most important assets? I know one that'll get up here pretty easily. Speech. 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 All right. Um, I, I find it uh, striking that uh, and I, I took a picture of the slide, uh, what's your favorite thing about Holden Beach? The favorite thing we like about Holden Beach is lack of commercial development. And I don't have a picture of the slide three or four back that asked about what you want. Right. And what we wanted was retail and stuff to support the beach. And you can't have 
lack of commercial. Well, lack of commercial development is the most important thing you like about the beach. I and a bunch of restaurants and entertainment and stuff uh, is, is the top thing you want about the beach. Or maybe you can have that, or maybe you can believe that, but it doesn't make sense. Sure. No, that is, I think it was a more nuanced response. I believe folks want to be able to go to like a nice local restaurant, but they don't want wings. Um, okay, and so do, should we put lack of uh, commercialism as? Well, I, I agree that that, that that and the clean beaches are the two most important things, and I believe that that uh, and most of the people who respond to the survey seem to believe that that the uh, preservation of the beach strand and renourishment as necessary are critical elements of the beach. Makes no difference if you live on the third row or the first row, but for the beach, right? People don't want to come to the beach. So, in terms of assets, beach, lack of commercial development, natural. Yes, sir. Well, it's a shared asset, but the Lakhvali Inlet is a tremendous asset for us as well as Oak Island. You know, we let that thing slide a little bit, and it's starting to have a resurgence, but. That thing closes is bad news for an awful lot of people. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Marshes in the wetlands. All right. Good. Anyone else? I'm trying to write as fast as I can. I'll, I'll throw one more. I think the canals. I mean, there are very few islands that have a canal system like we do, and I think it brings an awful lot of value for visitors coming in with boats, et cetera. So canals and water, canals slash water access? Access, yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite things is dark skies. We don't have a lot of light diffusion. Okay. You can see stars here. So lack of light pollution. Low light pollution. No, no light pollution. Low light pollution. Low light pollution. All right, Justin's going to be my my banner. He's going to come up and uh, put these up on the wall. Thank you. itself is, is an asset that, okay. that needs to be on the list. Particularly in view of water. Water views. Yes, sir. Yeah, low noise, uh, so you can hear the waves breaking and the birds uh, chirping or whatever. Any 
more assets? A home and beach chapel. Home and beach chapel. Yes, sir. Good neighbor. All right. <laughs> about the chapel itself. I think one of the great things that they do is they open their doors for community activities. We don't really have another place to gather. Okay. Uh, here, 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 and there. Town hall. Okay. <laughs> so um, chapel community activities or uh, community no, space? Receptivity to having community activities. History. Okay. All right. The, like the playground and the basketball stuff and all that stuff over here. Oh, okay. Park. Yeah, no dog park. Is that talking about? There's a name for that park. <laughs> there's two basic parks. <laughs> All right, yes, we're going to get on to everyone's favorite in just a minute. <laughs> Continued residential or commercial development versus all the issues we put under environment that were spoken of, the beach, marshes, lack of sound, lack of noise, and then 
dark skies, all that. So, um, development versus environment, basically. Okay. Or development versus preservation, is that? Yeah, that's a good way. Yes, ma'am. A lack of adequate parking for the larger homes that are rentals. Yes, ma'am. Uh, storm consequences is it, um, storm water is there, but the consequence I thought of when I thought we were going to hit by a five is my, you know, what how's the town going to survive and how am I personally, you know, going to do whatever? Do we still pay taxes when we don't have houses? Okay. Is storm vulnerability fair? Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I'd say that to the degree that there is any development, because I don't know if it will be or not, it's got to be contained and it's got to be planful and it's got to be an obtrusive. So it's kind of like the development versus preservation that you got to. It's got to be handled very, very, very carefully to take care of all the things that everybody listed as the assets of what we made. Um, so I don't know if we're going to see zero. Right. But whatever there is, it's got to be very well done. Um, perhaps we should put that in desires. Do you want to talk about that as a uh, development encroachment or development conflict? Is that? That would be good. Okay. Development encroachment. And, and slash conflict. properties. We have some hoarding <laughs> issues also. <laughs> Borders. <laughs> I'm not sure I spelled this correctly. <sighs> don't have uh, don't have Microsoft don't have Microsoft Word to uh, help you every time you write a word. That's right. Okay. Yes sir. Yeah the word sustainable growth might be involved with many of the issues there, but you, you can probably can't get away with no growth at all. But if it's sustainable, it pays for its own way, and we can accommodate it without burdening everyone else who already lives here. Okay. Um, I don't know how you would. I mean, so the question is, what is sustainable? There's kind of like, that's part of what I was trying to say. It, that's a good word. Though. And I think for growth, yeah. For and, the, and I think that's more of a desire, and we can move on to that. Um, but. Um, you know, uh, if, if you guys are, are we good with the issues? Do you want to move on to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, enforcement of existing ordinances and codes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What about cars and boats that have been sitting in spots for years? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, nu nuisance vehicles or code enforcement or are these is this here or are we want a nuisance vehicle one I would list them a separate line okay we've got a lot of them cars and boats privately owned pier. Okay. Um, most other beach towns have public piers that tourist people can go on just to go look at it. They don't, you know, they can pay to fish, but they don't have to pay to get on it. Okay. Uh, which they do here, which I feel is uh, very unusual for a beach town. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, privatized pier, is that, or private pier? Or it's private. It's, a, it's privately owned, which I think is not a good thing. But that would be the issue. So it's like the town needs to take it over. So, but if it's if it's a desire, we'll, we'll put we'll put public pier as a desire. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Any more issues? Cigarette butts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By a, a vendor who was working on my house, that there was a bobcat on the island. Yeah, there were two. So, so yeah. isn't that considered so dangerous? It's like, yeah. uh, no. wait till it attacks you. It's not okay. We got bobcats. Is there something that you want to put up? Uh, I would do a white podcast myself. <laughs> any more any more issues before we move on to desires? You guys have been fairly positive. That's great. <laughs> hey, sometimes we have one page of assets, ten pages of issues, and one page of desires in some communities. So. <laughs> okay. So desires. We already mentioned a couple. Sustainable growth. I think was mentioned, right? Is that correct? And then I think uh, public pier. The public pier as opposed to the private, yeah. Dog park. Yeah, good quality dog park. Yeah. <laughs> Not built on top of the drip spoil. <coughs> okay. There, was there another one then? I guess or maybe it's just, it's just, You know, it's just the same kind of a, an idea. The wildlife management. Okay. I, the, because we, we, some of us like beer, some of us don't. Uh, bobcats, uh, are they really a, a concern or a threat? That kind of thing. More desires. Is yes, beach nourishment coming? Uh, yeah, beach nourishment. Beach nourishment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ongoing? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Can 
county support for redevelopment of the causeway or the rezone. It's not ours, is that correct? Right. Some synergistic news there. So a desire to improve causeway appearance, is that? maintained and marked inland. Okay, good. Okay, so um, Justin is going to um, pass out um, dots to everyone. You're all going to have um, six dots. So there's two red dots, two green dots, and two blue dots. So two red dots go on the assets you feel are most important. I think the assets are 
uh, right there. The green dots go on the issues you feel are most important, and the issues are right there. And then the desires, are, uh, blue dots go on the desires. And Justin, do you want to start handing those out, if you could? Um, and uh, once you've got your dots, you can go um, post those, uh, post what you feel is most important. Um, and then you all are free to go. I don't, I don't need any more of your time. And I, and I do thank you very much for coming. Um, if you do have questions, you're welcome. I'm, I'm available to speak with you. Uh, we also have committee members here and staff. So I'm, I'm open to answering any of your questions as well. So thank you very much for coming again.